All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. So today we're going to be talking about Amanda Seals and her interview with Shannon Sharp. And um, some things she said, uh, yeah, we'll be back. Sketchpad, you know what it is. like share subscribe to the page hit the thumbs up button it helps us out push us up in the algorithm youtube and all that good stuff hey man listen twenty dollars if you want your song to be reacted to it's twenty dollars and we're gonna react to it we're gonna hit you with a thumbnail we're gonna hit you with uh, a reaction live reaction a youtube link is always gonna be on youtube on our youtube channel forever you know what i'm saying and you're gonna be on our instagram and our twitter and all, all X and all that good stuff. So we're going to promote the hell out of you for $20. At least one time promotion. We're going to do all that. And we promoting you. So you, if there's something you're interested in, hit the email. You know what I'm saying? You can see the cue card on the screen. It is what it is. All right, man. So let's get into this video. So when I was at Disney, yes. and I was in the situation at Disney, I was there as the only black girl, okay. and there was a whole crew, it's like 12 of us, 12 of us, um, and so I was called an N-word right there while I was there, and uh, I was also bullied while I was there because I was told that you're only here because you're black. You can't really dance, you're just here because you're black, so don't get any ideas. So that's what I'm being told by the other children. Does that suffice as racist to you, or would you want to call it something else? Is that just kids being mean? That's Yeah, the kids. So let me ask you a question. As a child, do you never said anything derogatory? You was just this model citizen as a child? I mean, children. Now, we're talking children, not functioning adults. Now, if you told me the adults, parents were telling you this, or the execs or people that are in charge of Disney are telling you this, I could agree with it. But at 89, I'm, I'm, you're probably 8, 9 years old. So to all of you great MAGA Republicans, I love you, you know that. Years of age. Maybe younger. So you have no problem with the children that were cursing out Ruby Bridges and the Little Rock Nine? You think I, no, that no, was just, you, I, do you think that was just them being kids? Kids can, two things can be true. Kids can be kids and not function as an adult and things can be wrong. And sometimes when kids say things, they're repeating what they heard their parents say. They don't know it's wrong. So what about the children who are receiving it? that know it's wrong is that doesn't does that not matter? yes yes so yes. if i'm so if i'm if i'm 10 and i'm receiving that treatment and i know it's wrong does it make my experience of it less it doesn't valid, make it any less, less valid? valid no so that's what we're here to talk about my experience yes and we, so my experience is that i experienced that and it was difficult so that's the valid part of this i'm not here to protect those people because it's irrelevant all right so that was the first mm. clip um we will get to the second clip, but let's 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 talk about this first clip. So, all right, off the back, Amanda Seals, you need to go get some help. You really need to go and get some help. I'm sure you're about almost. She's probably in her 40s now, and you're saying that this happened in the 80s. It's so over over 20 something years, 30 years, whatever. And you're saying that children were racist to you and you're only here because you're black. Okay. Let's just say that did happen, right? Let's say that did happen. That doesn't make everybody racist and it doesn't make kids racist. And I want, I know people going to say this, it sounds crazy, but, but I had to learn this just because somebody says something doesn't make them racist. Just because they say something doesn't make them racist. I think that Amanda Seals need to go seek some type of professional help because if this did happen to her, which I'm not saying it didn't, she's very traumatized by it. And she need to seek some professional help because 
You should not be holding on to something for all these years. As from from when you was a child up until you're an adult. That's a traumatic experience. You have to go get that taken care of. Or at least get somebody to help you talk about it. Because when is it going to come a time when I don't know if you know anything about this woman? I think you do. And every time she has an interview, it always ends up like this. Every show she was on, it ends up like this. Everybody says the same thing about this woman. Everybody. So it becomes a thing where if everybody's saying the same thing, that must mean that you're the problem. So you have to you have to go get this taken care of, because if you're bringing up stuff that happened when you were a child. And you're bringing it up now. Come on now. You got to understand it, it, it. It's crazy to me. But what you think? Um, I do. I do feel uh, that she might have to, you know, get some therapy as far as like that experience. Um, I do see where Shannon Sharp is saying, too, because like. Kids do say some crazy things, and that was probably something that they heard their parents or, you know, their guardians say somewhere down the line. And they, you know, they just copy and paste it, and they thought it was the right thing to say to somebody else, uh, to a person of color, you know? So they said it. So I believe, I, I, I definitely, I believe that happened to her. I believe that happened to her. Um, I do see her point of view in a way. I do see her point of view, but I also understand that, you know, she's an adult now and that happened when she was a child, you know, um, let me just say this people, people's, people's experiences is different. Like me, me per se, if that had happened to me, I don't see myself, I don't see myself holding on to that all the way until now. But I also I also don't know what type of space, what type of space she was in at that time, like mental space. I ain't talking about financial space or if I'm talking about mental space, where where was she at at that time? Like to really, you know, what I mean, really be holding on to it until this until now, like what type of mental space was she in at that time as a child? Because sometimes if if you experience certain things that haven't come to light, you, when you, when you get experience something like that, you will tend to hold on to it just off of other experiences that hasn't really come surfaced yet. So she probably has something else happen behind the scenes that really ain't, really ain't come to fruition. And then, that goes and happens to her and that strikes a nerve that triggers her to be holding on to this, you know, this argument or this painful, you know, treatment till now. There's two, there's two different, there's two things that I, that I, uh, I think people got to understand when it comes to situations like this. One of those, one of the situations is, you can't go around calling somebody racist and then get mad at them because they defend themselves because of experience you had. That's just as bad as being racist. If I call somebody a racist because they're white, you're no different from a racist to me. That's true. So was what, she doing? Hold on. Not to cut you off. That's what she, she was, was she doing that? Well, we don't know if she's doing that, but I know that's what she does now. Oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? If you yeah. if you go into a if you go into a conversation, basically, because the way she's the way she's going into this conversation is that people don't believe her. My thing is, if people don't believe you, then they must find a flaw in your art in, in which you, your statement. There has to be a flaw in your statement because if everybody's saying the same okay. thing and they don't believe you, then there has to be a flaw somewhere. How is it that mm -hmm. everybody is racist towards you? How did how 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 did that just happen to only you? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm 
Mm-hmm. There's nobody else out. And then you got to pay attention to some of the words that people use. I was the only black person in the school. Really? You was the only black person in the school. I highly doubt that. You the only black person in the school. One. Nobody worked there that was black. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I think that mm-hmm. they single themselves out because I could guarantee you if you go back to her childhood, it was probably a lot of black. I'm not gonna say a lot, but it probably was more than one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And people like her, they put things into this. Uh, they make things. They they uh, sensationalize things. They make it much bigger than what it really is. Okay, kids was picking mm-hmm. on you, right? That doesn't mean. That everybody's racist. But let's get to the second clip and then we'll 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 continue on. He's like, so what are we here for? And she's like, well, you know, she corrects me in front of the class. And these three black people are like, here we go with this racist bullshit. You know, because that's really what it is. We're in Florida in the 80s and the 90s. And um But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay. If you do you think she would have felt equally as offended? If a white kid, because I'm assuming this teacher was white, right? Mm-hmm. If a white widow, a white child would have corrected her, I think most teachers would feel some type of way if a child corrects them. That's not for me to surmise. I'm just saying that my experience was this lady giving wrong information. Yeah. And I'm allowed to correct her. Now, this is the same lady who tried to accuse me of stealing. And when a white girl said, no, Amanda didn't steal it, I did. She was like, well, I think both of you need to go to the principal. Right. That's a lie. I know people are going to be mad at it, but I don't care. That's a lie. She just fabricated that whole story. And I can tell y'all how I know. She didn't say nothing about this. This is the same teacher that accused me of stealing. She didn't have said that. When he asked her about this, she further on tried to prove her point about this woman being racist. But she never answered his question of him saying, well, don't you think that a teacher would feel some type of way if a child was to correct them? Mm. Well, that's not for me. That's not for me to to uh, uh, do anything with. Basically, what it is is, and keep in mind, this is the same teacher that said that uh, accused me of stealing. Okay, so let's talk about that. Why would the teacher accuse you of stealing? Did you ever steal something? Did someone ever say you stole something? And I'm not saying these people are, are, are uh, model people, model citizens. I'm not saying people don't accuse people of things. But as a teacher, you take an oath. I will have to say that. And when you take an oath, you kind of have to abide by it. So did this teacher just all of a sudden say that you just stole something out the blue? Where did that story come from? Because you never even explained that. And then you turned around and said, the girl who stole it said I stole it. It wasn't her. That's a lie. Nobody hops up and say, well, it was me. I did it. It wasn't her. I was the one that stole it. Which doesn't make sense to me because usually what happens is people get caught. So you can't say that the, you said that everybody, all these white people are racist. So why would the white girl who you consider racist, why would they protect you? That's why I said there's a flaw in her art in her in her statement. She's I believe she's making some of this stuff up because who's gonna go back into the 80s and find out? Nobody's gonna know. If I could say anything and sensationalize the story mm-hmm. again. What do you think? Uh no, I um for that part I agree with you. I agree with you. Um like uh I feel like um as far as teachers, right? So, right off the bat, you know, when a, um, when a student tries to correct a teacher, a lot of times the teacher is going to have a rebuttal because in most teachers' minds, not all, but in most teachers' minds, they feel like, well, you know what I mean? They have the background, they have the degree, they have the education, they have the understanding, they have the know-how. I do feel, you know what I mean, there are some students out there that just are ahead of others, and 
they sometimes can correct the teacher and the teacher will take the correction and keep moving. I have seen that before, you know, um, but, you know, most majority of the time it happens the way it would, the way it just was presented, like the teacher is going to, you know what I mean, say whatever, whatever, and that's going to be that. As far as her and the situation where her stealing, like when he was when when he was discussing this whole thing, was that where was that where was that at? Like you just add, it's like she just cut and paste and added it in there, you know what I mean? To 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 I don't know if it was to to you know basically get some real people back in on her on her side because she knew that she was gonna get some uh fire at her. Or whatever, you know. Um, I definitely don't think somebody's just gonna blurt out and say, "Oh yeah, it was me." You know what I mean? Most of the, they they would have to be caught for that to happen first. That girl that she mentioned never said if she was caught or not. She just, you know what I mean? You just saying that she admitted that it was her, and you said that that you never stole nothing. You know what I mean? You know, so I don't know. It's just kind of a conflicting story. You know, I don't know if it's true or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. If that makes any sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. I just don't understand how she tried to merge the two together and then further on by by, by taking it even a step further and saying, well, the girl said that she stole it and then she told us both to go to the principal. Okay, so the reason why she told both of y'all to go to the principal because the girl admitted to stealing and you were the one that had the problem. So, of mm -hmm. course, she's going to tell y'all both go to the principal. But, but why would she tell y'all go to the principal? Like, her stories, it just, it's, to me, it's not adding up. But anyway, um, let's, let's go. Let's keep going. I am in Orlando, Florida, which is a notoriously racist state, Florida, in the 90s. And I'm talking to you about a white woman who is speaking about black people, indigenous people in a country where those same indigenous people have had all of their land taken from them by former criminals that were sent there from England. And she is calling them Stone Age people. And I, as a black girl, the only black girl in her class, am correcting her. But I, 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 my thing is, you're right. She possibly misspoke or she didn't know. I guess my question to you is, why do you even feel compelled at this juncture in this interview? Why would you even fee be feel compelled to try to... Because I don't want... Because I'm not defending. But my thing is, is that what I'm trying to say, most adults, when kids correct them or speak, feel some type of way. This is not unique to a black, white, or white black. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I'm sorry that you took it that way. But I remember when I was growing up, my grandparents and parents said, hey, kids, stay in your place. Adults are speaking. That's all. I don't, maybe that didn't happen where you were from in Orlando, Florida. But where I grew up in, when I grew up, kids did not correct adults. So no, I apologize if you thought, thought it came off as combative. No problem. He basically just explained what I just said. Like, you know, mo and, and, and most of the time, like, especially in them old school days, you know what I mean? You don't go and try to redirect an adult or you're going to get your your face smacked off. You know what I'm saying? You, you're supposed to stay in your place now. Mind you, like I said before, there are cases where, you know what I mean, sometimes you might have you might have a a, a certain uh relationship with uh with students or with the children and they might say something like that, not in an ignorant way, but they might say something like that and and the the adult will, will, will seek the correction. But that, you know, I I would think at that at that point in time those years, I wouldn't see that happening that much. I would see that happening more than I would see it happen back then. I'm going to put it to you like this. No child should be correcting an adult. Period. No child should be jumping up to try to correct an adult. And especially if they right. have some type of personal vendetta against each other. Because obviously, you felt as though you had to correct this teacher. To me, 
to me, it sounds like you were she was combative because if the teacher. If the teacher was upset at you correcting her. And you're telling us that this teacher was racist in this notorious Florida is notorious racist state. It's so many black people live in Florida. So many, so many, so many black people. I used to live in Florida. I used to live in Florida. So I know so, there's so, a lot of black people in Florida. And I'm not here to say that Florida isn't racist. What I am saying mm-hmm. is you reaching because you probably was the problem in the class. If you, if the, if you're, if you're, if you're telling me that the teacher accused you of stealing, the teacher did this, the teacher did that. And then you say that you corrected the teacher because she was wrong about something. Then obviously to me, you're combative. And people are saying, well, how is she combative? Because you got to look at the whole story. Everything is centered around her. Every time she has an interview where she does something, it's always centered around something that happened to her. Well, maybe you're the problem. Did you ever think about that? Maybe you're the problem. And that doesn't exclude exclude people from being racist. But I am saying that no child should ever correct the teacher, ever. I don't care what the teacher is doing. If you have something to say to the teacher, you wait till the end of the class and you say, hey, I was reading something and, and I think that what you said, I disagree with. But you're trying to correct a teacher, an adult in front of the class. No child, I don't care. No child should ever correct the teacher ever. If you if you are in college and you're having debate class with your professor. OK, cool. If you're in high school and your teacher is the head of the class. You don't jump up to correct the teacher in front of everybody. If you're in, in, in middle school, who are you trying to correct? You haven't even lived. Oh, did she said something about the, the black people or they were from the stone age and their land was stolen. All of that. She said everything she said basically tells me that she sensationalized this whole story because she threw a lot of stuff in there that nobody really cared about. That's just my thing. So I think she needs to seek help. That's all. No, I definitely think she needs some therapy. Uh, a lot of things, she, a lot of things she was saying, you know, a good, good portion of it was very contradicting. Um, like I said, man, the times, the times that we, I feel everything that she was saying as far as the correcting part, I feel like the times we are living now, that's more likely to happen now than back then. Mm-hmm. If it did happen back then, the, well, the correcting thing, the correcting thing, like when she's correcting, that's more likely to happen now. The kids nowadays will definitely will definitely try to uh, correct the teacher for something. It's more likely to happen now. I don't. I I know when I was in school. You don't, you don't, you wouldn't dare go and try to, uh, go to correct the teacher, whether you felt like they were right or wrong or not. But like I said, you do have, you do have the, uh, the few of the bunch that will test those theories, but I feel like those theories now are more testable now than what they were back then. But wait, I feel like that was happening. We missed the point. We missed the point. Hmm? Remember when she said... What? Remember when she said, she said that her parents came to the school, right? She said, mm-hmm. her parents came to the school and they asked her, what are you here for? And the mm-hmm. parents said, when she said, they, 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 they asked the teacher what happened. And she said, well, she keeps correcting me in class. And what was the first thing she said? Her parents oh, said. Oh. First thing her parents said was what? These racist motherfuckers. So she was taught. Okay, that. yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. She did say that. Yep, the racist. She was taught yep. that. So mm-hmm. this is the reason why she's in 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 her head. Her parents taught her that. 
Her parents taught her whether their parents experienced racism, but it was passed down to her. That's what a lot of people ain't catch. She literally said her parents was like, oh, these racist motherfuckers. So her parents was telling her, well, white people are racist. And this is the reason why she's the way she is with the teacher. Explains everything now. Now why? Now I see why you are so combative with the teacher. And even some of the stuff you saying the teacher was being racist about. You probably now that now that she's now that I think about it. Now that I really think about it. She really she really was reaching on a lot of stuff and she really was sensationalized. And I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I am saying that if if the teacher said that she stole something, the teacher might not have said that. The teacher might have some, said something was missing and she probably took it as if, well, she looked at me, so she must have thought that I took it. You know what I'm saying? And it could have been a story like, oh, well, something was missing, but it wasn't stolen. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like something could be missing, but not stolen. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, I, um, where's my pencil at? Right? And then she says, oh, um, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't borrow your pencil. Well, you was the last person with it. Well, I didn't borrow it. I put it back. And then she said, and the other girl says, well, I have the pencil right here. And she twisted it into saying, well, I stole it. That's how I'm looking at this whole story now. Because I'm looking at it from the point of view, if your parents taught you about racism, then you projected that on everybody. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I, uh, I, I definitely agree with you on that like you know i ne i i missed the i missed the uh, part with the uh parenting and whatever like that but now when you repeat it and you explain it it's definitely yeah i understand totally yeah man anyway we out of here see y'all peace by sketch pad you know what it is we out of here